Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Oh, it's been like years, I feel, since I've sat down and talked to you guys, and I am here to do a chit chat video. Um, this is a video that's kind of, not kind of, but actually very important to me, and I figured I probably am not, obviously, obviously I am not the only one out there going through this, and I also know that there's a lot of you that it might be going through this that don't know you're going through it. So here is what we're talking about today. So as you could tell obviously by the um, title of the video, I had a surgery Tuesday, March 7th. So about 10 days ago because today is the 17th. So um, I had a surgery on a Tuesday and I had um, Something pretty, I'm just going to jump into the video because it's going to be quite a long one. Um, it was a pretty basic surgery, but surgery obviously is surgery. I had a laparoscopy procedure done, um, which is um, a procedure that they do two incisions, one through your belly button and another one like really low. I think with the lap laparoscopy, I think it really um, depends on what they're going in to look for. Um, for me, they were going in to look for something called endometriosis. And I know a lot of people don't know what that is. Recently, there's been a lot more, um, there's been a lot more talking about the endometriosis itself. Um, I've been seeing commercials on TV and stuff. So um, I think it's very important to keep educated on these things as a woman. Um, I was, it wasn't something, it, so it was something that was brought up to me years ago by an OB a long, long time ago. Like, I would say probably, I'm 22 now, so I was 16. So it was quite a few years ago, Um, and he said to me, I think you might have endometriosis. And I never really paid attention on what endometriosis was. So the procedure itself, they go in through, um, they do an incision on the belly button, and for me, they did an incision on my really like lower, lower, lower belly um, area. So they went in, they go in, what happens with endometriosis, it's something that cannot be um, diagnosed without doing the laparoscopy procedure. So I actually have put like everything that I need to say on my phone because I know I'll forget. So um, endometriosis is just a um, chronic and very painful disease. Um, so it's very hard to explain endometriosis because I feel like everyone kind of has their say on what endometriosis is. Um, as far as my procedure, um, my OB had said that years ago and then I changed the OBs recently um, because I was getting concerned. About a year and a half ago when I finished cosmetology school, um, I was working at a salon with, I'm, I'm not going to mention names because I didn't ask permission to speak in regards of these people that I'm going to speak in regards to. So um, I was working with someone at the salon and she had stated to me that she had recent, she had had endometriosis. And when I would explain my symptoms to her, she would say, you know, I really think that you have endometriosis. Like, I, I think it's something you should look into. Um, and then I just had a lot going on, so I really never did. But recently, I was like, you know what, I need to know. Um, because when I visited my OB and we kind of got more in depth, there's a lot of things that goes into endometriosis, such as, for me, it, it, it's been very painful for me. Um, for a very long time, but the pain wasn't bothering me. What was bothering me was that I found out that through endometriosis, you can actually become infertile. And for me, that hit me in the gut really hard because, I mean, I've always wanted children. It's something me and Hugo have talked about ever since we met. Um, it's very important to me. It's not important to everybody, which is fine. But for me, the reason that I actually did it wasn't because of the pain, to be honest. Because I had lived with the pain for so long that it really didn't bother. It bothered me. It was very painful. But I probably wouldn't have had it done unless I was told about the infertility part. So, um, this is a very long, long video. <laughs> So because I don't want to give you any wrong information, I have actually pulled up the endometri 
endometriosis website that states all the information about endometriosis. So um, endometriosis occurs when the tissue that acts a lot like the lining of your uterus um, starts growing outside of your uterus when it, where it, obviously it doesn't belong. Um, these out of place growths called lesions or implants can cause severe pain inflammation throughout the month so for me what it seemed like um this is gonna get into tmi but i just thought as women i think other women need to be aware of this i'm not gonna say that you're you have this because you have these symptoms that's not what i'm saying but i do think it's something that is very important to because with me i thought the pain was normal um but it very obviously wasn't. So it's like chronic pain. It's extremely, extremely painful. Um, the three, like they call like with endometriosis, they say there's three P's, which is painful periods, pelvic pain. Sorry, guys. Pelvic pain in between periods and pain with sex. This is TMI. I know. Sorry, my mom's calling. So um, that right there. Um, those are like the, one of the three, those are like three of the symptoms, um, as to why you should kind of contact your OB and kind of your OBGYN and kind of go over some of these things if you experience any of those. So for me, I was experiencing every single symptom. And another thing that I was experiencing was I would have my menstrual cycle obviously every month, but it, it started becoming, um, not very, um, punctual <laughs> it just wouldn't come like like a normal you know it, it wasn't very like oh it came the 12th it's gonna come the 12th next month it wasn't like that for me for a long time it's you know for a very long time so um and also one of the biggest reasons that I thought I, this is something I might have was because I was constantly in pain so even though I was not on my menstrual like I wasn't going through my period at that time of the month I was in pain for the whole duration of the month. I felt like the cramping all the time. It was sporadically, like not every day, but I would have it. And it was just frustrating. And then it really got to a point. That's when I was like, okay, I need to see if this is really something I have. So um, the I actually got three different opinions from three different OBGYNs. Um, the first one was multiple years ago, like I said. The second one was... A last doctor that I had um, and I had ovarian cysts in my ovaries so he had said to me that I had to be careful and I just had to make sure that um, I would get ultrasounds all the time just to make sure that they weren't growing back because obviously with um, having cystitis which I have in my ovaries it, it can be an, you can become infertile from it but obviously it's not that it's not very common but now having these two things together can become a issue. So I was like, you know what? Like I came home one day. Um, the but the first the the second OB I had gone to that had said that to me. He actually was my OB for a while. He had stated to me that maybe um I should either have this done. But then I was like, you know what? I'm getting married in October. I have so much going on. Maybe I should just wait. Um, and he said, well, if you want to wait, you can wait, and you can just one day whenever you're ready try to get pregnant on your own. And then that to me was what I wanted to hear. So I was like, awesome, okay, I'm not gonna do anything about it. A few months had gone by and I'm like, you know what, I'm just nervous. Like I should, I don't know, when you start talking to me about infertility, that's my drawing point. Cause now I'm like, okay, no, like I need to find out what I'm gonna do. So we ended up, me and Hugo ended up meeting with this new OB and she was extremely nice. I had heard really mixed reviews about her, but she is just short, quick to the point. She doesn't like mess around for like, she tells you how she feels and then we'll move on. So she, I told her everything. I had met with the nurse first. The nurse said that she really thought that I should go get this done because she thought it was something that I might have. So I said, okay. That's then like mentally, oh, I was at, with the nurse by myself at first. Mentally, I was like, I'm going to do this. Um, because also, like I said, when I worked at the salon, um, she she's someone I love talking to um, because I felt like she um, had gone through a lot of the things that I had gone through. You know, like I felt like the things that I was feeling, she would talk to me about them and she'd let me know. And I just love talking to her. She's a wonderful person. And 
I, at that time, I wasn't really thinking about kids. I wasn't thinking, I'm, you, you just, it's not something you think about right away. And I was just like, okay, maybe I don't need to do this. Um, but then when I did meet with this OB, she did tell me that she thinks I should have the procedure. So I actually scheduled the procedure like a month ahead after seeing her. I was extremely nervous because, um, I got really sick from anesthesia when I had had a previous surgery and all these things and I was just nervous I think I was mostly in denial because I knew like in in my heart I knew that this is something that I had um now how it can be cured is when they do go in if they do find it they actually ended up doing three incisions on me because I ended up having it so they did one incision in the belly button one below my belly and one on the left side of my stomach so they go in and I me and Hugo laugh about it because I don't know we try to keep positive but it was so funny he's like oh they go in with a torch and they burn the endometriosis no they go in with like a laser and they they burn the endometriosis they ended up doing um they ended up taking a sample of my endometriosis and sending it to do um a can't think of the word right now oh my god Anyway, I'll insert the word here. They ended up doing, is it an autopsy? Yes, an autopsy of my endometriosis. And it came back that it was definitely endometriosis. So with the whole infertility thing, um, this is some inf factual information that I got from their website. Um, it says, women who have trouble getting pregnant may also have endometriosis. In fact, studies suggest that about 25%, 50% of infertile women also have endometriosis. There are theories as to why women who experience infertility may also have endometriosis, but nothing has been proven for sure. It's possible that the reasons could vary for one woman to the next, with anything else, obviously. So some of the things, so I thought, I thought I was gonna have this surgery and everything was gonna be a-okay. I knew I had it, so once I had the procedure done, my biggest concern was, so what, what's next? Like, what do I have to do next? I thought that I could just wait until I was ready to get pregnant to, like, kind of try. I don't know. I don't even know what I was thinking. I just thought that maybe when I was ready to get pregnant that, I mean, they were going to burn the endometriosis off. Endometriosis ends up growing back, which I was aware of, but I didn't know how quickly it could grow back. So it can grow back fairly quickly. And the two treatments are they have a shot that you could take about, I think it's every month for endometriosis. And it, um, it, I'm not going to say it will harm your body. It's going to help you with endometriosis, but it was not the route that I wanted to take because it almost puts your body into a menopause. Um, because when they put you with, when, when they give you the shot, what ends up happening is you stop ovulating. Your body will not ovulate, which the whole reason I did this was so I can get pregnant eventually one day when we decide to. Um, and I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put my body through that. The other thing is birth control. I have never been on birth control. Um, reason being is because I have tried it in the past. My body does not do well with birth control. I get extremely sick. Um, like extremely sick so it contradicts itself and it makes my body um trigger to be like think to be pregnant and I throw up all the time it's horrific um so I was like okay so now I'm I'm in the situation at this exact moment so I have to pick between the two I really am not doing the shot absolutely not <sighs> I don't know the best treatment that my doctor has told me is to be to get pregnant best treatment is you get pregnant and your body for those nine months cures itself because um, you're not having a period so you're not your uterus is not shedding so obviously that is not an option for me right at this moment because I'm getting married in October or I don't even know um, the moral of the story is I think I'm gonna go with the birth control route I'm gonna see how my it's been a few like a lot a long time since I've been tried any kind of birth control method um like pill the pill or uh, they she gave me the nuva ring I was like I don't know if I like this or if I'm gonna use it but it I don't know what I'm gonna choose I'm most likely gonna go with the birth control and try to see how my body's gonna take it but um 
I don't think I'll be on it for long. I don't know. So that's just something that me and Hugh have talked about. And it, it, to me, this is a very, very hard, very hard thing to go through. Um, it's not a huge deal, I will say, if you are someone who doesn't really care to have children or whatever. But for us, it was a big deal and we took it very serious. So with the lep with the lep uh, leparoscopy, which was the procedure, I actually recouped really well. Um, I woke up, I was in a lot, a lot of pain. I actually was, um, I woke up and I was like so aware of my surroundings. And the first thing was I asked a nurse, did I have it? And she's like, okay, no one is like that awake and knowing of their surroundings when they wake up, like chill out. Um, but the nurses were amazing. And I remember I got up and I got up so quickly, like when I woke up from the anesthesia that I wanted to know if I had it, that I looked at her. That's the first thing I asked. And then I started choking because I wasn't fully awake. So I started choking. Now she's like, oh my gosh, I think I have to put you on oxygen. Cause I was choking and I was like, could not breathe. So that was the only downside, but the surgery went extremely well. I'm healing extremely well. I'm still in some discomfort. The first week was not what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be in severe pain. I was not. Um, she she did prescribe me narcotics. She The quantity that she dispensed for me, I did not even take, not even one. So I didn't take any narcotics, like no pain medication. I did take ibuprofen, which I took for my swelling. I am still extremely swollen. Um, I'm, I was like joking. I was like, I look like I'm six months pregnant. Like I'm so swollen. It's like not even funny. But um with, I healed really well. The surgery went extremely well. I couldn't be happier to have done it. And I think the reason why I recouped so well from the actual procedure, a lot of people had said, you know, it's not a huge procedure. I think you'll be fine. Um, but I think it was because like I had the willpower. I wanted to do it. It was something that was very important to us. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this. And I did. And it was the best decision I made because they went in and they did find the endometriosis. I didn't have a huge amount, but I had just enough, obviously. And so now it's just figuring out what we want to do. <sighs> but yeah, that's really it. I just kind of wanted to update you guys because I had a lot of messages um, asking me, like, what did you do? A lot of people thought they know I'm like nuts and they thought I had plastic, like I went to, I wanted to do plastic surgery. And I was like, no, not yet. Not my time yet. <laughs> so, um, no, it was not plastic surgery. I I wish I had some more exciting news, but I don't. I just think it's a very important. If it's something that's important to you, I think it's something that you need to look into. Um, with me, it was. So I did. And it's not, it wasn't easy. It's still not easy. It's still, like, really hard to think about because I don't want to get emotional. Um, it's something that me and Hugo have always really talked about. We want children, like, in the worst way. Obviously, when we think we're ready. Not, I'm not saying, like, you know, but... It was hard, you know, because I still don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how our fertility journey is going to be or how I'm going to be... But I also don't want to think about the negative and I don't want to be like, oh, I'm not going to be able to have kids because... That's about the worst thing that you can do is to put your body through that and say, oh, I can't have kids because it's, it's emotionally draining. I know of people who are, who have been trying to get pregnant for years and it's, I think when you're placed in a, this predicament, you start thinking about the people who've been trying for years. We haven't been trying, obviously. So I might start trying and get pregnant right away. I don't know, but. It's not easy to think like that it, it might be something that I'll have to deal with later on for sure. Um, but anyway, before I get more emotional, I don't want to. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below if you have any questions. I would be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, and we will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.